Joined by a, well, first of all, we made a list a couple of weeks ago of the greatest vocalists in rock and roll. True. Paul Rogers, you made everybody's list. You oh, made, right. well, just about everybody. I, I was going to say, it. except for there was a person on our staff that wasn't familiar with, because right. she's like 20. Yeah. <laughs> but as soon as we went through the music vault, you know, at the mm -hmm. radio station, and we started playing Shooting Star, Feel mm -hmm. Like Making Love, All right. even the firm stuff. Is, Fabulous. So even the firm real, stuff. I hate that album. You love Radio <laughs> yes, That's like I one do. of your favorite songs uh, of all time. But that Satisfaction Guaranteed is my favorite. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh, oh tell me, baby. <laughs> Look at her Thank you very much. You know, I, it's it's amazing. It's like having uh, a li three lifetimes, three bad company, the firm, each, uh, you know, it's like another lifetime. Every time I move into a new kind of, uh, you know, era or project, it's each of the bands of the separate unit of music. Um, I have a solo album out it's, uh, live in Glasgow, and it's my opportunity to put together all of the uh, material that I've written throughout these bands. And um, that's a lot of fun. It's great. No. Can I, uh, I heard, heard this is what I heard about The Firm. Did The Firm really begin because Jimmy Page was bored and just hanging out at your house, and then you guys decided, hey, let's jam, and that became The Firm? Is that true? He was just kind of bored, Zeppelin had ended. Well, it, yeah, sort of. I mean, there is some truth. I was recording a solo album at that time, Cut Loose. I had a studio in my house in Kingston in, in London at that time, and... You know, I was, I'd come off the road from Bad Company because I wanted to spend... I, I got a little bit tired of the, the cycle of touring. I wanted to be off the road, basically, and spend more time at home. And um, Jimmy, uh, Led Zeppelin were not functioning at that time because of the very sad demise of that wonderful drummer, the greatest yes. rock drummer yeah. ever, John Bonham. So he was kind of at a loose end, and he came over to see what I was up to, and he, you know, I played him some things, and he, he brought some uh, music over and said, hey, can you write some lyrics to this? And I said, I'd love to. And that turned into, I think it was Midnight Moonlight Lady, the first song we wrote. It was this huge piece of music. Um, and we started writing songs. And what happened then was we got a call from Ronnie Lane. They were doing this charity tour. Uh, Eric Clapton and Jeff Beck and all these great people were doing charity tour for multiple sclerosis. We went out there, Jimmy and I, and we didn't have a name. There was no firm. We just played. <laughs> and that's where the firm was born. Well, you know, speaking of charity tours, I've always wondered this. Do you, how does it, when you become famous, lots of people, you know, want to talk to you, including charities. How do you decide which charity you're going to work with? That's got to be hard to turn down charities. But yeah. you can't possibly do them all. We don't, we don't turn them down. We, we do, we do quite a bit. You know, <laughs> we, have lots of, we have lots of fun with it as well. I mean, because, mm -hmm. you know, it actually comes back to you. It's amazing. You have such a lot of fun. We did something Cynthia's going to tell you about. This. And, and this is your wife? This is my wife, Cynthia. Cynthia. Yes. Hi, Cynthia. Well, we, what we're doing in Paul, this is Paul's 40th year as a recording artist. So what we're doing this year is we said, what would you like to do? And he said, well, I'd like to give back. So we started it off by doing a charity for children with leukemia in Detroit. We were able to raise seventy. $8,000 wow. there. We just did the Gridiron Greats, gridirongreats.org. We raised some serious funds there with Jerry Kramer and Mike Ditka mm -hmm. and Nils Lofgren came along, Sam Moore, for veteran players who aren't doing well, who aren't being supported. Yeah, that's, that's Ditka's yeah. big thing, taking exactly. care of the players exactly. that, you know, are yeah. right. about that on the yeah. Super Bowl. And, so right and for the Grammys, what we did is we gave two items to Grammy Cares for their auction. And one item is a necklace that Paul wore that, that I designed for him. It's uh, crystal rock, sterling silver and glass. <laughs> and then uh, we also gave the award, that one of the awards that he received for his DVD reaching gold status in Canada. He autographed that, and that's available for, gra available for Grammy Cares. Wow. Tomorrow we're going to the Fender Center. We're doing a fundraiser for the Fender Center's Kids, Kids Rock Free program. So we do as much and charity as we can. Yeah. yeah. So we do as much as we can. So if, if people need help, they contact us. We send them merchandise, items, what whatever is a, they oh, you got a website that if people want to? Oh, yeah, paulrogers.com. Paul Rogers, Rogers with a D. Absolutely. Yeah. Can I, we, I, we're Go ahead. about to be stolen from us. Um, I thought this was very exciting news, and I don't know where this stands, but are you planning on touring with Queen? Oh, we have toured. Well, you know, I, don't, I know you yeah, played together, we, but... Yeah, I mean, we, what we did, we got together, and we had such a blast that it turned into a world tour. And we basically went out playing our hits, relatively mine and theirs, um, and we took it to the next logical step, which is go in the studio and see what we could come up with, see what we could cook up that was brand new. And we've had a lot of fun doing that. We're finishing the album um, next month. It's for a summer release, and we will tour in September in Europe and to support of it. How has the reception been among Queen fans? Because 
you know, I wouldn't say you're not filling. Nobody can fill Freddie Mercury's shoes. Right. I, don't, I don't think anyone can fill an mm-hmm. original person's shoes. And he was, you know, they broke the mold. He was an original, a great front man and a great songwriter and with a lot of heart. You know, I mean, I, I s- sort of studied the band by watching DVDs and listening to their music when I took this on. Mm-hmm. And I became more and more impressed with uh, the power of his, uh, his stage performance and his stage presence and, and how deeply... You know, they sung some really deep songs as well as just the flat out rockers and it, and, and it was very impressed. So when I, when I took that on, I decided that the way I would handle it was to, to reinterpret those songs in my own way because I do that with the blues. I do that with soul sometimes as well. I reinterpret it my own way and that would be the only way that we could make this work to create something brand new. W- would we hear some bad companies um, as well as the Queen catalog? Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, you okay. know, I one of the exciting things about the uh, the current upcoming tour will be is that we will not only be doing our relative hits as it were, we'll also be doing brand new material, which is really a charge and it's really fun and exciting. It's kind of uh, it's very much I mean if I can tell you how it sounds, it's kind of different because each song is so very different from the other. So it isn't like this or like that, but there is a kind of a, a blues soul feel to it, which I think I probably bring and then there's still bit. those harmonies right. you know there's still those harmonies and there's still that precision that uh, the Queen are famous for you know that beautiful precision you know all that yeah. beautiful solo I think we're